Welcome to the second week of 50 weeks of marketing topics. As you can see here, and probably in the text, the week's topic today is the marketing mix. The marketing mix is a topic that pretty much every marketer or most business students who did a Marketing 101 paper would have come across as pretty much the first um, framework of marketing that we talked. So the framework is essentially a, a set of tools, categories, guidelines to help set your marketing plan, your, your marketing mix. Um, it was popularized in the sort of 1980s as we sort of moved away from very basic mass marketing techniques early on in the 1950s when marketing and advertising first become prevalent uh, and we moved on to today sort of more niche marketing but this sort of came about halfway through so and it's still a basis of of your marketing learning from from day one it's a practical um, framework for business owners to make sure that they've tipped sort of the bases with their marketing but it's not perfect which I'll go into shortly but so the four P's is the commonly known um, marketing mix theory so the first aspect of the marketing mix is product so it's pretty self-explanatory but it also includes all the research all the product designs and features everything about a product like this whiteboard everything that was designed and researched to, to um, provide a solution for customers that's your product um, so secondly price obviously how much a person pays for your product or service. But again, there's more than that. Your, your price is, is all about a, a strategy as well. You don't just put a random price on it. Obviously, you want to be profitable. You want to be making money. But there's a certain point where customers aren't going to pay a certain price. And there's, again, a certain low price where the margins you're going to be squeezing and you want them to go a little bit higher. Um, and again, pricing depends on positioning which is one of the later topics but where you sit in the market is, is basically where you're pricing you could be doing promotions and things like that that's all goes into your pricing the third one is promotion so again promotion everybody kind of knows what that means that's what most people sort of assume marketing is is promotion so advertising your tv ads it might be sponsorship it might be loyalty programs, it might be a content marketing strategy on social media, all your social media accounts, that's promotion. So anything which is increasing awareness of who you are, communicating your company's message to your com to customers, your branding, that comes under promotion. And the fourth one there in the four P's is place. So your place of business, where is your, if you're a cafe, where are you located? How convenient is it? What is the um, sort of the feel and atmosphere of, of the place of business? Is it the cleanliness? Is it tidy? Is it, is it professional? Is it presentable? If you're online, how easy is it to navigate a, a you know, website? How easy is it to go through the purchase process online? So this four P's of marketing mix that was very product centric you know very focused on on selling products so sort of worked for industrial um companies and and manufacturers and things like that but as we've moved on to a more service-based economy especially with the internet and, and digital marketing global marketplace we're, we're a lot more niche focused in marketing because there's not so much power in, in the few large corporations corporations who can pay for advertising on TV for example we can all advertise and promote so we can all find a market um, so now seven P's we've added a, a few P's because marketers realized that it was quite a basic model you know it had its limitations for application to different settings there were aspects that weren't really discussed in those four initial P's so there's a couple of different models of seven P's. You might count five here, that would make nine P's. So 
People is used in both of these alternative 7P marketing models, but the first one also uses physical evidence, so that might be recommendations, um, your online reviews on Google or Facebook, you know, um, it's, it's your evidence that you can do what you're sort of telling people that you want to do. If you go to a, an office and you see a solicitor, you expect to see you know, some certificates up on the board or something like that, which gives you credibility and makes that sort of ease of mind for your purchaser. The next one is process. So how easy is it to get to the point of sale and, and buy the product? So if you're at a supermarket, how you know clean, convenient, all those aspects you expect from on the supermarket, all the way up to when you go through the checkout and swipe it through. It's the whole process from parking um, to the availability of trolleys, all the hand baskets. That's a pet peeve of mine. A lot of the time they don't have a hand bath. But anyway, if you're online, how easy is it to go through the steps to, to purchase a product? Is there customer service to help people out if they have an issue? People, so the people is the common in the, in the seven, two 7P models I've got here. The, the people are the people, you know, the guys and girls that make a company tick from all parts of the value chain. Everybody has to buy into that same vision, um, communicate the same messages, have the consistency of the brand and what you would expect all the way through. So every circumstance is giving a positive experience, which leads to satisfaction. Satisfaction is a, is a common sort of goal in services marketing of, of judging your performance, how satisfied the customers. So if we move on to the next model again, positioning is the next P there. So positioning is where you sit in the market relative to your competitors. So I like to use the example of mobile phones. So one end of the scale, you've got a $50 phone, just your basic needs of calling and texting. You know, it might be very basic abilities to have other functions. Then right down the other end of the chain, you've got your, you know, two, three thousand dollar iPhone. So essentially the product is the same, a phone, which you can, you know, call or text, go online to check your emails, but you know, what makes something different from a $50 product to a $3,000 product? Where you sit along that continuum is sort of where your position is in the market. Are you positioning at the cheaper end? Are you going to be in mid-range? Are you going to compete with the premium? All of that is your positioning strategy. Finally, packaging. So when a product gets to the consumer, everything about that packaging service needs to be functional um, and attractive. So you're walking through a supermarket, the packaging stands out, looks funky or fun or professional, or tasty or healthy. There's all different perceptions of different styles of branding. How does the customer receive your product or service? Again, that's the, that's the sort of customer focused approach where it's since 2000, um, relationship marketing, the importance of that and social media has sort of skyrocketed. So we've moved on to this seven Ps to help us guide our marketing strategy essentially. So hope you like today's topic. Next week we're talking about authenticity, which again is another sort of hot topic. People want to do business with people and companies that they trust. So it's about humanizing that relationship, you know, company being authentic, not trying to hide or, or polish who they are. See you next week. Thanks.